Okay. My name is Nicholas Wiscassi. I'll be doing a presentation this evening on socks, a very important, very topical <laughs> issue. Um, so just, just to begin, what I'm going to be doing is I'll just go through kind of a little bit of the word origin of socks, followed by some history of socks, and then bringing us to the present day, where we are now with socks. <laughs> um, and really some of the important issues that have come up, socks in the government, socks out of the government, socks in the business world. So, <laughs> <laughs> so first, what are socks? Socks are an item of clothing worn on the feet, usually under shoes, sometimes under their sandals if you're in Florida and over the age of 70. And they are, they're worn usually because the feet are actually the part of the body that sweat the most, so it's to help prevent shaving, especially when you're using athletic socks or whatever else. So originally, socks, the word sock comes from the ancient Latin word socus. This is true. Um, which meant a low-heeled shoe. And that was, so that was what was used in ancient times. Um, followed by that, it was then changed into sock, spelled S-O-C-C, -C, in Old English to mean a light slipper. So let's go through the history now. Originally, <coughs> socks were animal skins that were tied around the foot, and they were used in prehistoric times, not prehistoric times, um, in like, you know, 1000 BC, they were used by people, they would just, you get the animal skin, it would protect your foot, it was very helpful, it was, people found it was better than stepping on rocks and thorns all the time. Um, so then you fast forward a bit, you have socks were used in ancient Egypt, they were used in ancient Greek, in ancient Egypt they had a, actually had a system whereby you could um, replace the heel of the sock, which wore out fast, very fast. You go a little bit further, the pants people wore shortened, people started to wear tights. Now tights are kind of a, a similar to socks in the sense that they're performing the same function, they just go further up the leg. On occasion they were held up by gardeners because again, without really stretching elastic material, it was very difficult to maintain the socks on your legs. And really when you're only wearing tights, you don't want things falling down. Uh, so that was, that was another thing to consider. A lot of other places, once they, um, once they, in the 15th century with the advent of the sewing machine, not really a mechanical one like this, they didn't have electricity yet, <laughs> you, had, you were able to produce socks about six times faster, so they started producing more and more socks, socks started becoming more and more common. They were less um, specific to simply the nobility. You had a lot of people, um, so then this, we go even further forward, in 1938, they started using nylon in socks. And this really brought about, in the 20s, you had, you know, argyle socks, and that kind of continued. You had, you started using nylon, you have different fabrics, you have different colors, you can do a lot of different colors with nylon. Um, so one of the questionable history things is actually the Bureau of Missing Socks, which is hearing <coughs> started during the Civil War on the Union camp and is now kind of somewhat of an urban legend that probably nobody knows about, um, which has its purpose is to find and locate and return all missing socks. There's also, interestingly, just started recently in Portland, Oregon, there is a sock summit where people <laughs> knit their own socks and their historical replicas of historical socks, which are then bring in and show. They're then put on display. You can actually email them. They don't usually get back to you. Um, <laughs> it's really interesting. So now, let's go to socks in the present day. Socks are actually very important for a lot of different reasons. First, we go into athletics. Athletic teams use socks really to mark what team, who's on what team, and it's part of the uniform. And it's really a crucial part if you look at soccer, you look at football, really any sports. You also now have, as, as we're starting to progress, especially for men, you'll see socks become more part, of, more part of the business world in such a way that you can really use that in addition to a tie to kind of show your personality. And this is something that I, I, think, I think a lot of people have seen recently. That, so they have different types of socks that try to kind of make people seem more personable. Um, I think very, very recently we've seen with George H.W. Bush, we saw him with his red, white, and blue American socks, which I believe were on the national news at one point. Um, and you'd see, you know, just that being a real big issue. Another thing we look at is foot wraps. So a lot of Eastern European militaries, until very recently, actually used foot wraps rather than socks in the military. So really, socks kind of have a very expansive reach as far as how, what their importance is, the different varieties of socks. These are, as I mentioned, the George W. or H. W. Bush socks, which he wore at a meeting, I believe, with the president. Um, you also see people now starting to use socks to politic, trying to wear funny socks to show that they have, you know, personality when maybe people don't really see a personality in the person. <laughs> um, which is really another, another thing that people are starting to think that's starting to become more and more important. So it's really, I mean, it's really, it's something that people really underestimate the importance of and the kind of the variety that we see, but socks are in fact very important. So now, one of the mysteries I'd like to explore, the wash and the dryer, why does one sock always disappear? <laughs> <laughs> so there are two theories. The first one is that there's actually a portal to Narnia and some of the socks escape. Not as likely. The second theory is actually that 
When you put your socks from the washer into the dryer, the static cling sticks one to the top of the barrel in the, in the dryer. You then take your load out, missing the sock, you bring that up to, your, up to your room, whatever. You lose the sock, you get the other sock in the next load, but you can't remember where you put the isolated sock. You now have one sock and no matching sock. And then you don't have, you know, depending on how much you paid for the socks, whether or not they are fair or pair, um, you end up with no socks. Also, sock puppets, somewhat frightening, not really important in modern culture. I just thought I'd bring it up as an aside. It is something that people see a lot in, like, you know, puppet shows you did them a lot when you were kids. And that's really, that's about it. That kind of brings us up to the modern day. So that's the history of socks. Those are some sock puns, and I'll turn it over to the next speaker. Thank you.